What does it mean to serve in the United States Armed Forces? It's a pledge to represent something larger than oneself. A duty to protect this great land and the freedoms our forefathers fought to preserve. I made that commitment 30 years ago. Like my father before me, I felt a calling to serve. My time as a member of the Navy taught me honor, integrity, and a purpose. At center for the Navy midshipman, number 50, David Robinson. Robinson with another block. He's taken over the game. Throughout my Hall of Fame career, the greatest team I ever belonged to was the United States Navy. Tonight, we begin a new season of college basketball in Annapolis. Four schools take the court with aspirations and hope. Majestic finish! It's good! Are you kidding me? We play basketball, but on the eve of Veterans Day, we remember those great Americans that sacrificed for this country. We salute the service of all past and present heroes. Welcome to the 2017 Veterans Classic. It's been seven months and seven days since our last college hoops game on CBS. Tonight we kick off another fantastic season of games with the fourth annual Veterans Classic from the Naval Academy here in Annapolis. Game one features the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Memphis Tigers. Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy along with Steve Lapis. 12th season broadcasting game, so you've played, you've coached, now you've broadcasted. Obviously the start of the season is great for everybody. Opening night brings a level of excitement for players, fans, coaches, broadcasters. Yeah, it does. Because it's the start of that road to the Final Four in San Antonio. And they've been working so hard, these kids. Coaches have recruited. Now you get to see the fruits of your labor and how you're progressing. A big, big night in college basketball. Well, we mentioned we have Alabama and Memphis coming up. Two very different teams, two very different teams from last year. But for Alabama, they're missing two key starters coming into tonight's game. Key starters. Colin Sexton, one of the best recruits in the country. Braxton Key, an all-SEC freshman performer last year. So these are two tough guys to miss. But they do have another big, big-time recruit in John Petty. 6'5", athletic two-guard who can shoot threes, scored 14 points in their exhibition. Now, this is his first night out, so we're going to see if he's got those jitters. They need him to be sharp tonight to make up for the losses of those two guys. Meanwhile, the Memphis Tigers have five junior college transfers led by Keevan Davenport, who seems to be the real deal. First team Juco All-American played on a team that was 32-2 and two last year. Year. This kid can shoot threes, run the floor, very athletic, rebounds the ball. But a lot of times, Juco players have a tough adjustment to this level of college basketball. So we'll see what Keevan has in his game tonight. He's even talked about that so of his teammates. Hey, we've got 234 games on CBS Sports Network this year, and it all begins right now. It's Memphis and Alabama. The tip is coming up next. Well, back here at Alumni Hall in Annapolis, Maryland, we get set for tonight's matchup between Memphis and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Avery Johnson in his third season as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. You want to talk about a guy that has an abundance of energy when you watch practice. That's what we saw today. 37 wins so far for Avery Johnson. But as we alluded to in the open, this is not the team he'll have next week or the weeks ahead, John Rothstein. Well, Tom, you know, obviously some bittersweet news with Colin Sexton, Alabama, and that's been the main story here in Annapolis. Colin Sexton will not play tonight due to his role linked to the FBI investigation, but he will be back Tuesday for Alabama, and Alabama also missing some other key players in this game. Riley Norris will not play due to a hip injury, as well as Armand Davis due to a knee injury, and Braxton Key, their starting power forward, out until December. So the Crimson Tide a little bit banged up heading into 17-18, Tom. Yeah, Braxton Key was injured the day before their exhibition game. So with that, we look at their starting lineup, and it's a bigger lineup than what we'll probably see from Avery Johnson as the season moves on. But look at Herb Jones, another freshman, six foot seven, 200 pounds. He has really opened up some eyes 
for the Crimson Tide. Meanwhile, for the Memphis Tigers, we mentioned they have five junior college transfers that are part of their roster. They will play an awful lot. If you think about it, they only have three players on this year's roster who scored in games last year for Tubby Smith. Tubby Smith, one of the best in the business. His second year, last year he was 19 and 13, his first year with the Memphis Tigers. His recruiting class this year, 49th ranked recruiting class. This is his 26th year as a head basketball coach. 26 years. That's all. That's you know. That's like dog years. Believe me, when you coach. So I mean, but it's funny to because I said, "Hey, kid, how are you, kid?" And he says, "Kid." I said, "Ah, you know, kid. What the heck? You know, you're you're still young at heart. You do this for a long time, and you're one of the best in the business." And Avery Johnson, what a class guy and a terrific coach. Yeah. Two great coaches in this game. Well, here we go. We're underway from Alumni Hall. It's Memphis and Alabama. Game one of this doubleheader. Game two will feature Navy and Pitts. Alabama with the basketball to start things off. That's Jones up top. Very athletic. As we mentioned before, the freshman at corner three, and it's good. Right out of the shoot, Alabama jumps out to a 3 nothing lead. Ingram converts with his first of the day. And, you know, Ingram was arguably their best player last year. This guy fills up a stat sheet, points, rebounds. This is a combination guard who's playing point guard in this game tonight. Average 10 and a half points last year for the Memphis Tigers. So just underway, we'll see a lot of man-to-man -man defense for both of these teams and a traveling violation. And we saw today Avery Johnson said, I need you to move the ball, but I need you to move it crisply. Well, not only that, did a great job there of finding Dazon Ingram in the corner, but he made himself available. He didn't just stand out on the perimeter. He put himself in a spot where the passer could find him at the three-point line. Avery Johnson has said that he loves the chance to coach these kids, kids in general, and he's really embraced the college scene at the University of Alabama. Here's Petty, his jumper no good, off the back of the iron. And man, did he wipe it away. I think this is potentially a big problem for Memphis in this game because Hall and Giddens are not only tall, long, and athletic, have great timing, they're terrific offensive rebounders. They're going to have their hands full with these big kids for Alabama. Hall averaged six points per game last year. They feed the post. Here's Parks, who gets it back outside. Shot clock down to 10. And a foul going up. So our first foul of the night. Well, this is a pretty powerful putback here, Steve. Well, Dante Hall is one very, very athletic kid, but you see they had their trouble with Giddens under there, too. Parks had trouble keeping Giddens out. Giddens in the exhibition game was Alabama's best player, 19 points, transferred from Ohio State, has a chance to be terrific. Yeah, we'll talk about him as this game goes on because we asked Avery Johnson about what he talked to him about when he transferred in, and he said, well, there was certainly a line of communication. The bank shot is good. He got a very friendly roll. That's Kareem Bruton, the junior out of Eastern Florida State, one of the JUCO transfers. 5-2 Alabama on top. Less than two minutes gone by here in the first half. Ball into some traffic, and it'll be a jump ball. All right, Steve, let's take a look at your keys to tonight's ball game. Well, I could say one thing about this. When you talk about this Alabama team in particular, they've got to be able to go on the glass, which is really, really important, and dominate in the paint. They have to limit their turnovers. They turned it over a lot last year, no doubt about it. And for Memphis, they got to make some threes. I think that's very important. Well, they forced the second turnover. Alabama does. Oh, here's Jones going to the basket, and he's fouled going up, so he's going to go to the free throw line. That foul is going to go against Jamario Rivers. Actually, they're going to call it on Keevan Davenport. So that's his first, team's first. So here is Herb Jones. So Memphis has to make some three-point shots because they're going to struggle to score it is. So making three, some threes will help. And they've got to get some easy baskets on the offensive glass. That's where they're going to have a challenge this year, especially the way Alabama is going to be in the paint tonight. Well, this was also one of the keys, too, Steve, that the, the Crimson Tide talked about free throw shooting. They were so poor last year at 65%. That ranked 311th in all of college basketball. And they were 315 in three-point shooting. So offensively, this team struggled last year. They were young, and that's what happens sometimes. But defensively, they were one of the best in the country. Whistle blows. Foul called underneath. That's going to go against Petty. That'll be his first personal foul. The other thing that they're hoping Colin Sexton is going to help with is they averaged almost 14 turnovers a game last year. So there were certain issues that they had that kept them from being an NCAA tournament team that this year I don't think will stop them. 
And now you see Alabama going to the zone. They play man to man. This is more of a matchup zone. You see guys pointing out men all over the place, like you see her Jones pointing. They're trying to pick up a man and play a matchup zone. Shot clock was under 10, and the foul called on Petty. That'll be his second one. And there's where first-year players get in a lot of trouble. They get in foul trouble early. That is a bad second foul to pick up. You know, you, you get one, you know you have one. You got to keep your hands off the other team. Well, Avery Johnson will check in. So now they go a little smaller. You know, the, the objective was go big early, see how it worked. Now they go a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller right now. And Avery Johnson Jr. is probably the only true point guard they have available to them tonight. Again, the 2-3 zone. Rivers along the free throw line. Gives it off to the corner for Bruton. And there's Rivers again. High arcing shot, and it's good. Well, you know, Rivers and Jeremiah Martin are oh, yeah. guys that are coming back from that year. One thing about Tubby's team, they always go. Here is Martin heading right to the rim. Oh. Oh. That's good. Count the bucket. Dante Hall with the foul. I mean, Jeremiah Martin, the left-hander, is a terrific point guard. He averaged over 10 points a game and four assists. So this is a guy who started a lot of games at Memphis. The kind of guy you need in a game like this with so many new, uh, we talked about the Juco players playing for the first time. This kid's ready to play. Well, it's a one-point ball game. He misses the free throw. Last year, he was a 67% free throw shooter. Alabama with the basketball. Dazon Ingram running the point for the moment. There's Jones up top. An illegal screen set by Giddens. That's kind of a, a, a point of contention again this year. It has been the last couple of years, but they're really focusing on it again this year. Well, they're focusing on the guy moving, and the thing they're really focusing on is his legs being more than shoulder width apart. They're going to, because a lot of times guys come out and they set these wide screens where they have their feet completely spread and they're taking up eight feet. Now it, the, the rule is your feet can only be shoulder width apart. Any more than that, it's going to be a blocking foul. All right, so now two Alabama players with two personal fouls right out of the chute, and we see the freshman Reese come in for the first time. Parks has the shot blocked from behind. Loose ball picked up by the Crimson Tide. Good hands by Jones coming in to block that shot. Here's Reese. He's a three-point shooter. It's a little short of the rebound on the weak side by Rivers. Reese is another big-time recruit. Yeah, they like his uh, potential. They like the fact that he's uh, getting in better shape and will continue to do so. Rivers with the rebound, whistle blows, and a foul on the floor. A lot of athleticism down there. And they, they had their pro day last week, and a lot of the pro scouts, they knew about Sexton, they knew about uh, Petty. They did not know about Hall, and that was a guy who really what well, made them very, very uh, excited, the pro guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hall and Herb Jones were the two guys that stood out in the, that pro day. They didn't know anything about Herb Jones either. Here was a guy, 6'7", freshman, that doesn't get talked about a lot. So Memphis with the basketball, down by one. 16-10 to play here in the first half. Davenport from the free throw line. Parks cleans it up and lays it off the glass. Well, I'm talking about a big dude. He came in at 276. He's down to 260, but he is a big 260. He's a big guy. He shot 70% in junior college last year. You can see why. He's got a pretty good touch inside, very strong. That's not a smart play by Dante Hall to try to dribble through two defenders. And Bruton, uh, going in, can't finish the rebound, taken down by Jones. And a foul called on Rivers into the open floor. Okay. Well, 1540 to play here in the first half. We are dusting off a little rust here at Alumni Hall. But Memphis looks like they're coming out ready to go. There's Parks with the offensive rebound. Stick back. Players from Alabama, Memphis, and Pitt touring the academy yesterday. I think they all love the simulator. Every year we do this, they talk about the simulator. And both coaches have talked about what a great experience this has been. So far, not a great experience for Alabama from a foul standpoint because you have Gittins and Petty, both with two fouls and 16 fouls in the first 422. And let's understand this. Normally, this Alabama team, when they are full strength, they have a lot of depth because Norris is a very good player who's going to help, obviously, Sexton and Braxton Key, those three guys that are going to play a lot of minutes for them. So they have tremendous depth, normally. Well, they have the basketball on top, down by one, eight to seven. Here's Ingram going inside. 
And he's fouled going up to the basket. Jamal Johnson called for the personal foul. That's his first, team's third. Uh, Dazon Ingram, who 66% free throw shooter last year. First one is good. Our Tops crew will get you up to speed on everything from the field to fantasy. It's that other pregame show presented by Kubota, Sunday morning at 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. So we mentioned last year Alabama 65% from the free throw line. Did you see uh, Ray Thornton coming in for the first time? On well, their exhibition game, the guards were 9 for 11 from the free throw line. The bigs were 4 for 14. And that's where Avery Johnson feels like there needs to be an improvement as Reese dives to the floor and a tie-up is called, and that'll be Alabama basketball. It always drives you nuts as a coach when you have the inside spot on a free throw line, the other team shooting, and you don't get the rebound. And that's something else that is another point of emphasis this year for the referees is watching guys bury people under the basket to get offensive rebounds from that second slot. I'm not saying that's what happened in this case, but that's something that officials are going to be watching much more closely this year. Well, Bemel inbound. We get it into Hall up top. And this will be an illegal screen set underneath. That foul is going to go against Herb Jones. That's his first team seventh foul already. A lot of time left in the first half. And a near turnover. And Jones dives to the floor. It is a turnover. Here comes Avery Johnson feeding the corner. Ingram for three. Too strong. And the rebound is tipped out. Avery Johnson will pick it up and then drop it into the hands of Memphis. And from the Tigers in transition. Martin pulls it back, feeds it inside for Parks. He turned the wrong way, and that gave Hall a chance to recover. He went right into Hall. Yep. Off the top of the backboard, that's not going to get it done, and Alabama will get the basketball. But that went to the top of the backboard because of Donta Hall coming to block that shot. 17 fouls, just two made field goals for Alabama. Little start, Jones, the freshman, sweeps his way in. There's the athleticism and the body control. You know, they talk a lot about Petty. They talk a lot about Sexton. They don't talk enough about this guy. Jones is going to be a terrific player. And Avery Johnson may be their best defender. Yeah, here's Martin in the paint off the rebound. Shot blocked by Hall and picked up by Memphis. Martin, no look pass down low. Block underneath and a foul called against Ingram. All right, so this is a sweet, sweet play by Herb Jones. I mean, this is a 6'7 kid who's very athletic, obviously can put the ball on the floor, tremendous athlete. And then on the other end, Donta Hall, tremendous shot blocker, one of the best in the SEC. Alabama with uh, three block shots so far. First free throw for Thornton is no good. Thornton is one of those five junior college players, and when asked about the atmosphere around Memphis, he said, well, because there's so many junior college players, I kind of feel like I'm right at home. <laughs> and he said that the team kind of clicked right away. Yeah, we saw that at times at shoot around today. We also saw times where they were still trying to feel their way through. You know, Junior Garland's kids can be tough because they come in with high, they only have two, two years, so right. their expectations are like, I'm not wasting any time. I got to be good right from the beginning. And it's a different level. This is not Juco basketball. Up top for a three, no good. Herb Jones follows his own shot, blocked by two different players. And here come the Tigers. Nickelberry in transition, and the shot is good from Johnson. I thought they were going to pass it off to Nickelberry. Yeah, that was a very nice move. I mean, he's there, probably one of their best three-point shooters. He made four threes in their exhibition game. So, And this is a team that shot 29 from three last year. So Memphis can use a good three-point shooter. Tied at 10. Ingram looks for the screen. And the bounce pass is cut off, so another turnover. Johnson with some quick hands. Malik Rhodes, no look pass down low. And Thornton cannot convert. It goes out of bounds, and it will remain Memphis basketball. Well, you're going to see Johnson just pull up with that little 12-foot teardrop. This Memphis team 
also very athletic. Don't have the overall size that Alabama has, but uh, they're very quick, and you know they're going to become a great defensive team with Tubby. Yeah, they lost their top three scorers last year. Diedrich and K.J. Lawson both transferred to Kansas. Markel Crawford is no longer with the team. And there's Davenport. Uh, Davenport will go to the free throw line and the fouls are really becoming a problem for Alabama and Davenport may be the best player in all of junior college last year so he was a great get for Tubby Smith and this kid can take it to the basket he also can step out onto the perimeter and shoot threes and he misses the free throw he did say that he understands and respects the fact that it's a big jump from the junior college ranks to the you know to the division one level 19 fouls for Alabama. There's under 13 to play in the first half. You see how active Memphis is moving their feet. Their hands are very active. They close out very quickly. Shot clock at five. Johnson looks for the screen. Throws it up from three, and it's good. Well, he knew what he wanted to do on that one. It's a one-point lead for the Crimson Tide. And a man defense by Alabama. And Jones called for the foul. It looked like he had all ball, but that'll be his second personal foul, and that's 10 team fouls for Alabama. And this after the main three by Avery Johnson. Well, you take a look here at Memphis's defense. They don't do a great job of getting through that screen quick enough. Now, Avery Johnson, not a great three-point shooter. He shot 31% last year, but you have to do a better job of getting over the top of that screen. To the free throw line is Jamal Johnson. And he makes the first free throw. He had 14 points in 19 minutes in the exhibition game. He's got some ties to Alabama. His dad, Buck Johnson, played for Alabama before going on to the NBA. And this will be the second of three that he makes. And now the third free throw coming. Have to admit, I didn't think we'd see Lawson Schaefer in the ball game this early. The junior from Coleman, Alabama. But Avery Johnson's team is in a little bit of foul trouble right now with 10 team fouls. He has three players with two personal fouls. Ingram thought about the three. Pretty crowded corner. Avery Johnson off the screen from Reese. Shot clock is at five. Johnson kicks it to the corner, whistle blows, and an offensive foul is called on Avery Johnson. There's an example of great help on defense by Tubby Smith's team. 15-13, Memphis on top by two. Memphis on top 15-13. Over the last couple of months, an FBI probe has played college basketball and has caused several indictments. As we mentioned before, Colin Sexton, the five-star point guard for Alabama, is suspended for one game, but he is only a small piece to this investigation. For more on that, here is John Rothstein. Well, thanks, Tommy. You mentioned Colin Sexton. He is just one small piece to the pie of this FBI investigation that has really taken over college basketball over the last five to six weeks. Several other programs at the forefront of this investigation, four assistant coaches, were arrested. You see some of the programs obviously right there that were involved. Arizona, Oklahoma State, USC, and others. This led to the termination of Rick Pitino at Louisville. And then earlier today, Tom, Oklahoma State announced that Jeffrey Carroll, one of the top players in the Big 12 and Oklahoma State's best returning player, being held out wow. of action indefinitely because of his potential role in this investigation, Tom. Yeah, it's a shame we probably haven't seen the last domino fall. Now, there's Sexton. Alabama is very happy that he is cleared after this one game. And it was the NCAA that came down with that suspension yesterday, and he will be good for the Lipscomb game, which is their next one. And there'll be no other violations for him moving forward, which is a great thing for Alabama. Very great thing. So obviously he's cleared of everything, and that's terrific for the kid and for the program. It's and also great for the game, too. Yes, no question. Now you see Alabama using this matchup zone, which they're going to need. They have 11 personal fouls, wow. 11.30 to go in a half. That is not good. Shot clock is under five. Rooten goes to the basket. Tough shot. Wow, what, what an angle he had. I'll tell you what, I'm seeing these Juco kids. Rooten, that is a pretty good move. He's playing very well right now. Davenport's been active. They're looking like they, they've played before. And Reese short on that three. Davenport with the rebound. Quickly gets it to Martin. Memphis on top by four. 
And a three pointer and a foul called underneath. That's going to go against Smith, I believe. Oh, no, it's going to go against Memphis. Boy, how about that shot? Well, wow, that's a lot of physical strength right there to be able to get that ball up on the glass. By the way, the foul is on Eno, who will check out. Back into the game is Mike Parks. Alabama turned around so, as if the foul was on them. That's the way things have gone for them. Schaefer breaks the press with Johnson. Nine minutes into the first half, Memphis on top by four. Ingram with a tough move, and he probably could have just finished that on the opposite side of the glass, instead tried to reverse it. Here's Parks underneath, run on the floor. Well, good recognition by Bruton to find Parks running the floor from one end to the other. Well, great job there in transition, without a doubt, running the floor. This Memphis team, as I said, very athletic. Whistle blows, foul called on Smith. That'll be the 12th team foul for Alabama. Hmm. This is a 7-0 run for Memphis against Avery Johnson's team. Giddens will check back in. Well, at this point, Avery Johnson has decided to put in two players who have two personal fouls. So with 10.32 to play in the first half, he has two players in the game that have two personal fouls. You don't often see that, but it's more out of necessity than no, anything else. It's absolutely out of necessity. Again, the matchup zone. And you know what you worry about? It's, it's a lot easier to say, I'm not going to foul on defense. Right. You worry about offensive fouls and illegal screens and how things about, like that. How about Schaefer onto the floor? Johnson high stepping in the basket. So the rebound is pulled down by Bruton. Well, excellent defense on the part of Schaefer for Alabama. Davenport for three, off the side of the rim. Neither team is really clicking from beyond the arc. Well, neither team was a good three-point shooting team last year. Now, as you said, a lot of new players out here tonight. Schaefer open for three, lets it fly, and it is no good. And the whistle blows, and the foul called underneath. And I believe that's going to be Gittens. Let's take a look at this play earlier. Well, you look at the transition right here, and you're going to see that Alabama does not do a great job. How about this right here? One, two, three guys that are trailing everybody else, as you can see. That is not, you got to sprint back on defense as fast as you can. That time Memphis just beats him down the floor. Well, Avery Johnson has a lot to worry about right now because he has Gittens with three personal fouls. Now to the free throw line is Bruton. Makes the first one. Gittens is going to wind up checking out. As Dante Hall is going to check in. No, Gittens is going to stay in. Smith will check out. Look at this foul trouble. Wow. Oh, by the way, the officials have just said that they gave that foul not to Gittens, but to Smith. So that's why he's out. That's three personal fouls on him. Well, they'd rather Smith have it than Gittens, I can tell you that. I and would agree. I mean, Smith's going to be a good player, but he's a freshman. Right now, you got to play defense. You always have to play defense without fouling, and Alabama has not been able to do it so far. I don't know if it has much to do with Memphis's quickness as them being a little out of position so far in this game. Avery Johnson for three. Left sideline no good. Rebound is picked out of the air by Petty. Fresh uh, 30 for the Crimson Tide. That's charge. Yeah, and that's offensive what you, foul. What, and that's what I was talking about. When you're in the game, you can control what you do defensively, but you worry about getting an offensive foul. And that is a, <laughs> I mean, that's an easy call. Yeah, that is his third personal foul, so Reese will check in. So now two players with three personal fouls. All right, Lap, obviously you coach for a long time. And when you have this happening, I mean, these are fouls, right? These aren't just the officials being ticky-tack. These are fouls, No, right? these are fouls. There's yeah. no question about it. And, you know, now you have a real problem with guys with three fouls. You, you can't, you really shouldn't even be playing these guys till like 12 minutes to go in the game now because <laughs> he picks up his fourth in, early in the second. Well, he's done for halftime, obviously. Right. But if he picks up his fourth early in the second half, he's done till there's four minutes to go. They're in a tough bind now with these guys. Martin's three is too strong. And Reese takes the rebound off the floor. Here comes Ingram running the floor. Petty for three. And that's a little too strong. Reese with the rebound. Good offensive board. Schaefer leaves it up top for Ingram. Back to Schaefer. 
output. Petty really wants to get involved offensively. He's off to the right, number 23. And now working inside the paint off the curl. Got a nice screen. Shot clock is under 10. It's good defense by Memphis. Shot clock is now at five. Schaefer, tough pass to Reese, just lets it go. And it's good. Three pointer from the right sideline for Reese. That is his first collegiate three. That was a tough one. Too. Yeah, he's a good looking player. 21 16. Rivers along the baseline. Parks just in front of the free throw line. Hall with the block shot. Running the floor, leaves it for Petty. He threw it a little behind him, and it goes out of bounds. You know, he probably took one dribble too long. He should have stopped right away and given that one up. Right now, Memphis with that defense up five. My dad served in World War II and was a wounded veteran in 1943. He came back home, started raising a family. The discipline that he instilled in and us as a family was critical. And to come back here, it gives us a chance to expose our, our players uh, to why serving our country is so important and what it means and what it has meant to so many people that have sacrificed their lives and families over the years. I'll tell you, Tubby was blown away by the campus here at the Naval Academy. Now, he grew up in Lexington Park, Maryland, which he said was probably about 65, 70 miles away. He said he came down to the Capitol a lot as a kid for different tours, but he never found himself on the campus of the Naval Academy. And he said that he was overwhelmed, his players were overwhelmed, and he liked the fact that he was able to show them different parts uh, of, of the yard, you know, whether it be the rooms and how disciplined the, the mids are. You know, this is a guy who told us that he was supposed to be in the Air Force once he got done with college, but then basketball called. Uh, so there was a, a sense of service that his dad passed on to him. Well, this is a great thing for these kids to come to, to see how the, the midshipmen do it here yeah. uh, in terms of playing basketball and doing all the other things that they have to do, wake up early, march. It's really uh, an experience. It's something for all these kids to see. Betty running the floor, off the back of the rim, no good. Oh, again there, this time with a two-handed slam. Well, how about this time? That's Alabama's only their third two-point basket. Amazing. In this game, the way they're playing with 10 turnovers and 14 fouls, they should be down 15 or 20 points, and they're hanging in there because they're playing hard defensively. Yeah, a little too strong with that layup, but Hall was right there. But then you see in the background, what you never want to see as a coach, you see everybody from Memphis didn't get back on defense that time. Well, a foul called at Alabama, not a shock. Rivers to the free throw line. What do you got, John Rothstein? Well, Donta Hall was obviously somebody who had a big-time offseason for Alabama. People from the periphery might have pointed to Daniel Giddens as the impact post guy. You talk to the staff throughout the offseason and summer, it was all about Hall. Well, he certainly has the body, you can see. Extremely athletic, great timing, shot blocker. Herb Jones going through the, the middle of the paint. He's fouled going up. And there are a lot of Alabama fans here, and you can hear them in the background. <laughs> the, mock, uh, the mocking applause. Well, a little bit, yeah. I mean, there is a huge difference in fouls. 15 team fouls for Alabama. Yeah, that is just the fifth for Memphis. Jones' is free throw, no good, as it rims out. You know, it's funny. You look at a kid like John Petty. He's a big-time recruit. He just can't find his way in this game right now. A lot of it has to do with Memphis's defense. Memphis's defense in this game so far has been really, really good. Jones misses the second free throw, and the rebound taken down by Davenport. Just a three-point lead for the Tigers, despite the foul trouble for Alabama. I think that's the thing you have to hold your hat and hold, hold on to if you're Alabama. Bruton called for the traveling violation. Take another peek at this foul trouble. Will this make you sweat a little bit, Steve, all these fouls? Oh, this would make you really sweat. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you have two guys with three. I mean, especially, you know, uh, Petty, who was one of your starters, to be in that situation. Then you got a couple of freshmen with two. That's never good. Shot blocked away by Davenport. Hall went up strong. 
And here come the Tigers. Davenport try to post up inside. Another foul. Mm. It's going to go against Herb Jones. Wow. That's his third personal foul. I think they're going to run out of players if they're at this well, pace. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You got three fouls for both of those guys on the bench, and now three fouls for Herb Jones as the free throw is good for Johnson. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Pete Gillen, and Gary Parrish are in New York. We'll have you covered on all the news and highlights of the first day of college basketball, plus Dana Jacobson and Wally Zerbiak. We'll get you ready for the second half from down here in Annapolis. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And that's, you know, as many fouls, they've taken 13 foul shots and only made six so far in Memphis, or they would be really a lot further along in this game. Well, Ingram makes that for, that field goal on a, a very good drive, and now it's just a two-point game, 22-20. Alabama wants to get out in transition, but you got to give Memphis a lot of credit. They've been able to run their stuff in the half court and really, even though it's funny because Tubby told us he wants to really get up and down, they haven't really played at that pace offensively. Yeah, Tubby said he wanted to wear them down a little bit if he could. Shot clock is at five. Bruton doesn't realize it. Double team. Martin with the shot fake. And his three is no good. Put back, though, by Davenport off the side of the rim. And the rebound by Alabama. And out of bounds, and it will be Memphis basketball. Well, this is the bucket that made it a two-point game. Well, these, these kids, especially a guy like Dazon Ingram, strong, can handle the ball in transition. When he's got guys backpedaling, he's going to be able to finish strong at the basket. So a two-point lead, Memphis with the ball with a fresh 30. As they clean up a little perspiration. Alandis Poole is the official that triggered the inbound. Memphis has gone over five minutes since their last field goal. The three points are all on free throws. Johnson. Oh, that is an air ball tipped out of bounds by Mike Parks. That was not a good offensive set by the Tigers. Is that an understatement? Left? That's an understatement. <laughs> Obviously, this game has been dominated by the both defenses, and Alabama's defense hasn't been bad when they have not fouled. You see the two teams both shooting 33% from the floor. Well, Petty can tie this game. Alabama can tie it or even take the lead. And Petty swings it up top. They swing it now to Reese for three. It's good. And Alabama's on top despite all the fouls by one with 5-10 to play in the first half. And by the way, this Reese kid can really shoot the ball. Here's Ingram into the open floor. And oh, that's two points. got some goaltending plus the foul. Well, we heard it today over and over. Avery Johnson, move the ball, move the ball. Well, you got the dribble penetration there and a great ball reversal by Dazon Ingram. Yeah, that's clearly a goaltending. So a three-point lead for Alabama as Ingram can try to make it a, a four-point game. Cannot, but Avery Johnson with the rebound. Petty from way downtown. And Hall with the rebound. And another fresh 30 for Alabama. Reese for three off the front of the rim. 25 22, Bama on top by three. Well, now with all of this said, with all the foul trouble for Alabama, Memphis, they need a field goal. Their points have come from the free throw line in the last seven minutes. Well, they're not a good three point shooting team, and this defense has them a little bit baffled, this matchup zone. Shot clock is at two. Martin ships around inside the paint. And the paint is controlled by Alabama with a defensive board. Ingram kicks it out to Johnson, and a blocking foul is called. Well, that should get a standing ovation from the Alabama fans. Hmm. See, once you put your hands on a guy like that, it's a foul. Ball will check out of the game as Ingram goes to the free throw line. We're going to go to our buddy John Rothstein. Well, Tom, if we're looking big picture right now in Alabama, keep in mind that the Crimson side are playing without their best intangible player, Riley Norris, and also 
a guy who a lot of people think has a chance to be the best guard in the SEC in Colin Sexton. Avery Johnson told me over the summer, Colin Sexton reminded him of a blend of the old Isaiah Thomas with the Pistons and wow. Kyrie Irving. You add Braxton Key, this is a top 20 team in America. Well, I think that's what everybody expected, too. You know, they came in in, in some polls in the top 25 and others just outside the top 25. I mean, this team, with when all their pieces are there, their final four potential. I'm not saying they will, but they have the talent if they get on the right roll and the right matchups occur, this team could go to a Final Four with, the, with that kind of talent. Tonight, the problem is they have, they are relying on guys. John Petty hasn't been able to do anything. They're relying on some young guys, and they really don't have a pure point guard out there, and I think that really hurts them. Well, for Memphis, they've missed eight consecutive field goals, and that's why Alabama has the five-point lead. And by the way, Riley Norris did go through practice today. He looked good, and they're just easing him back in, hopefully that the to get him back for their next ball game. I think if this were an NCAA tournament game, he probably would play. Little teardrop and a finally a field goal. That one by Kareem Bruton. And that's what you have to do to this matchup zone. You have to try to beat it off the dribble. If you don't get in the lane and make that defense converge and then kick it, you're not going to get anything. That time, good penetration. Ingram thinking about a three, and it's no good. And the rebound is pulled down by Memphis. Here's Bruton in transition. 3.20 to play here in the first half, and Bruton is bumped out of bounds by Reese. Well, time to take your breath a little bit. Alabama up by three. Well, Kareem Bruton going right into the seam here and shooting the teardrop. That's what you have to do against that particular defense. Right now, Alabama on a little bit of run of a run up three. Well, back here at Alumni Hall on the campus of the Naval Academy, Alabama is on top 27-24. Give them a whole lot of credit because look at all the fouls. It says 10-plus. They have three players with three fouls, and they're still on top by three. And part of it is because they played such good defense. Yeah, this matchup zone has really got Memphis confused, and I think that's been part of the problem. And look here, you're going to start out. They have everybody's got a man, and that's why it's a matchup zone. And that's the big thing about this, and it makes you stand around. And that's what Memphis is doing in this game. And now they make a mistake here, Alabama, really, by having two guys go up to that wing. They were fortunate to get away with it because they have a shot blocker like Dante Hall who was able to stop that ball from going in the basket. So a very, very confusing defense. You can't stand around. I think Memphis is finding themselves standing around a little bit, looking at this defense instead of attacking it. All right, so to the free throw line is Kareem Bruton. To try to make this a one-point game. 319 to play here in the first half. Memphis 6 of 13 from the line. Make it 7 of 14. There's Tubby Smith. All smiles today during shoot-around. You know, it always kills you. You have all these fouls by Alabama and 8 of 15 from the free throw line for Memphis. Well, it's back to a one-point game. Alabama with the basketball. Ingram doing it all by himself, and he's fouled going up, so he'll go to the free throw line. He can't finish it off, so he'll get a couple shots. Well, you mentioned uh, Alabama potentially is a Final Four team, but what are your Final Four teams? Well, I mean, right I'm, I'm really going on on a limb here, as you can see. <laughs> Where did you find? Where did you figure out Duke? Huh? Yeah, they were tough, tough teams to figure out there for a Final Four. Uh, the outlier at number six in the country right now is Villanova, uh, who I think is they have probably the best point guard in the country, which makes a big difference. Um, so I think that the, you know with Jalen Brunson, so. These guys, Arizona, DeAndre Ayton, a freshman, spectacular. Duke, Marvin Bagley with a freshman, spectacular. Michigan State, flat out loaded. Besides Miles Bridges, Jaron Jackson, Cassius Winston, I think those are four quality, quality teams. Well, but again, would... not going out on a limb picking those <laughs> four. It would be a heck of a Final Four if it were those four teams. Alabama on top by three here, under three minutes to play. Davenport swinging it to Martin along the perimeter. 
Shot clock is down under 10. Davenport sees there's a mismatch, goes to the basket, gets a nice comfortable roll off the side of the rim. And that's, again, what, what have we have seen from Memphis offensively is their best offense. This kid can shoot, obviously. What about Schaefer for three? But we've seen Memphis now attack this defense with a little bit of the dribble more often in the middle. That's what they have to continue to do because they're not a good three-point shooting team. Yeah, see, 0 for 5 so far in today's ball game. Meanwhile, Alabama 5 of 14. As Schaefer, who's played nearly seven minutes in this first half because of all the foul trouble. And again, they got a good opportunity there because they got the ball into the lane area. Here's Avery Johnson on the long pass, and that's goaltending again. 34-28, Alabama's lead is up at six. Dazon Ingram with his head up. Well, this is a six-point game, two minutes to play in the first half. Despite the fact there have been 17 fouls called against Alabama in this half. Bounce pass to a cutting Rivers, and he's fouled. So we'll get a couple shots. Well, they did a good job that time. The other thing you can do against a matchup zone is screen those top guys. That time, Rivers screened one of the top guys, rolled to the basket. They got him the ball going in. So they're doing a little bit better job now, Memphis is in the half court offensively against this matchup. Rivers makes the free throw to make it a five-point game. Jamario Rivers, 56% from the free throw line last year making the transition to being more of a wing player this year. Talked about the atmosphere at Memphis with the uh, the absence of the Lawson brothers. He said it's just a better atmosphere right now than it was last year. 34-30, Alabama on top by four. Reese for three, a little short. He might be getting a little weary, and there's a foul called against Hall. That's just not a good foul. Well, you're going to take a look at here at Rivers with the headband on top. He sets the screen on one of the top guys in the zone right there. And then he's going to roll, and they don't the – two guys go to the ball. That's what you want if you're on offense. When two guys go to the ball, that leaves you four on three everywhere else. That is good offense. A good recognition, too. First free throw is good. So Bruton converts. I mentioned he had 11 points in the exhibition game. He's played 13 minutes so far. And he's already matched his total from the exhibition game with 11 points, four rebounds in this first half. 34-31, Alabama's on top. Avery Johnson pulls up, looks for Reese, back to Johnson. Had a whistle and a foul on Bruton. Avery Johnson initiating a little contact, so now he'll go to the free throw line. Well, with all the trouble Alabama had free throw shooting last year, Riley Norris and Avery Johnson were both uh, two of the best. Johnson was at 76%, and he misses the front end of the one and one there. Boy, they are right. They really are struggling from the free throw line. I think Tubby needs to get Bruton out of the game. A minute to go, he's got two fouls. He's been their best player tonight so far. Nice bounce pass and a putback by Davenport off the miss by Ray Thornton. Well, I think you can see why they like Davenport so much. They do a great job of helping. Everybody's got their eye not only on their man, but where the ball is. Oh, a Schaefer with a little step back jumper from 15. 36-33. He's got big seven points. <laughs> Whistle blows and a foul call on Schaefer. Huh. It's something. <laughs> well, Schaefer has already matched his career high in points, a walk on. And with 36 seconds to play in the first half, Martin misses the first free throw. They are now 11 of 20 from the free throw line, Memphis is. If you're that man right there, Avery Johnson, your team has picked up 19 fouls, nice. and you still have the lead. All right, there you go. Bruton's checking out. 
And Malik Rhodes checks in for Memphis, and now a timeout is called. So a 30-second timeout. We'll be back right after this. Well, Alabama's storyline is that they have the lead, but they have 20 team fouls, 12 made field goals. They have three players with three fouls. Now, the 20 team fouls, you look at that number and say, all right, the second half, it's not going to matter. What's going to matter are the individuals who have the three fouls. Yeah, because if you pick up your fourth early, you're done till yeah. there's three or four minutes to go in the game. So they've gone, they've, they've fouled a little bit less lately, playing mostly this matchup zone. That's what they have to continue to do. Got to tell you, it's impressive, though, to see how they've been able to maneuver around all these fouls, whether you agree with what the officials have called or not. They've been able to manage through it. Got a difference of six seconds between shot clock and game clock. We figure Alabama's going to run it down as far as they Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Here's Ingram off the screen by Reese. Steps through a couple of defenders. Down the ball. Oh, what headed jam. That's his third slam of this half. 38-34. Five seconds to play. Whoa, that's a tough Whoa. shot by Rhodes. But the putback by Thornton was left all alone, and it will count. I think Alabama almost fouled twice on that last they possession sure on top of it. That could have been one there. Rhodes just chucked it up, and fortunately, Ray Thornton was there to lay it in and make this a two-point ball game. 38-36, Alabama has the lead, and John Rothstein is with Avery Johnson. Coach Johnson, an incredibly physical first half. 20 team fouls, but your team still has the lead. How? Well, we just maintain our composure. Um, obviously, a, you know, a lot of things didn't go our way in this first half, but I'm really proud of how our guys uh, stayed confident, they stayed aggressive. Uh, we were almost in the bonus in the first three, four minutes of the game, so we got to do a better job of defending uh, with our feet and not with our hands. Some phenomenal early minutes for Alex Reese. What allows him to be so ready as a freshman? Well, all of our freshmen are confident. They feel they were ready to come in and play from the first minute, and uh, fortunately we had some exhibition games uh, back in August that helped them to get their feet wet so they're pretty confident so hopefully everybody will you know play better defense we'll have better balance on offense and give ourselves a chance to win thanks coach good luck in the second half okay, thanks. Tom all right John thank you very much that's the end of the first half after the break we'll send you to Brent and the gang in New York you're watching the veterans classic on CBS Sports Network the 24-hour home of CBS Sports Well, back here in the Naval Academy, we see our score at halftime. It's Alabama 38 and Memphis 36. Despite all the fouls, Alabama still has the lead, and it's partly because Memphis, which is not a great three-point shooting team, hasn't converted a three, but more so, they really haven't converted from the free throw line in this first half. No, I mean, 12 for 21 from the free throw line. Alabama with 20 fouls in the first <laughs> half and 10 turnovers, and they're sitting here with a lead. So Memphis has to get out and transition a little bit more. They're not a great team in the half court, and they've got to make their free throws. All right, so let's take a look at some of the highlights for the first half. Now, Ingram for Alabama has had himself a very athletic first half with 12 points. How about 12 points, five assists, one turnover, and you know, most importantly, one foul. And <laughs> In this day and age, and yeah. This, this is one of their experienced guys. This kid who had a terrific season last year uh, in the SEC, so they're expecting big things. And Bruton playing his first game, junior college kid, has been very strong going to the basket. The problem for Memphis is no perimeter shots at all, but this kid is getting it done in the lane. And what you just saw there, trying to split the top of that defense, that matchup zone, very important that he tried to get in the lane like he did there. Well, there's Tubby Smith talking to his team a few moments ago. He talked to our John Rothstein. John? Well, Tom, I just talked to Tubby Smith, and he said the big thing right now for Memphis in the second half is simply finding the open man. He feels like they're doing a good job getting shots. They're just not going in. One of the reasons why they're not taking the highest percentage shot that needs to change if Memphis is going to have a chance to win this basketball game, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it, it's noticeable how athletic Memphis is. I think all of us wondered how the, the junior college players would fit in. They've got some quality players. I mean, they're going to keep getting better. Alabama, on the other hand, you know, you, you throw away the team fouls now, but you look at the individual fouls. I mean, they have three guys with three fouls. I mean, this kind of foul trouble you don't see usually in a, in a half. 20 fouls, as we talked about, but Memphis not taking advantage of those fouls by making their free throws. Right. And the other thing Memphis hasn't done, even though 
Alabama has 10 turnovers in the half. Memphis only has four points off those 10 turnovers. They've got to get more off their defense in the second half, Memphis. Alabama playing tonight without Riley Norris, who should be back in his next in the next ball game off the bench, playing without the freshman Colin Sexton, who should be back for the next game against Lipscomb, and also playing with Braxton Key, the SEC all-freshman team member from a year ago, who's out with a knee injury. And here is Alabama and Ingram in transition with a two-handed slam right out of the gates. Yeah, really not a good set, that first set for Memphis on the offensive end. 40 to 36, Alabama on top by four. Alabama playing straight man to man now, but what they do is they can switch one to five because they're so athletic. Boy, Rivers wow. leans that one off the hip of Petty, and he's able to get that one to kiss off the glass. That would win a game of horse if he made that shot consistently. Yes, no doubt about it. 40 to 38. Posting up days on Ingram. You know, that's that's the kind of stuff that uh, Avery did. It's NBA coaching stuff, like trying to take advantage of certain mismatches. College coaches don't. I'm not saying they don't do it. They don't do it as much as a pro guy like Avery Johnson. Davenport with the rebound, gets it to Martin. Back to Davenport. Outside for Rivers. Davenport for three. It is no good. It rims out. Hall with the rebound. Steal, though, by Memphis. Here is Parks, who has the shot blocked by Hall. Boy, real quick hands by Kareem Bruton from the backside on that steal of Dante Hall. Whoops, snuck in right from behind. Yeah, Bruton just caught him napping a little bit. So the foul called against uh, Alabama. 40 to 38. Crimson Tide on top by two with 18.35 to play here in the second half. Bruton shot fake into the paint. Tries to lean it down low, but it's cut off by Reese. And restarting the second half here instead of Giddens, I think it was a great move. Petty just cannot get anything to go. Yeah, that missed shot off the back of the rim leads to a ball out of bounds, so it'll be back to the Memphis Tigers. This is not what John, what John Petty had in mind for his first game, 0 for 6 from the field. Now this little 2-2-1 pressure. Yeah, we watched them do this today. We also watched them work against the 1-3-1 of Memphis, which we haven't seen in this game. Two minutes into the second half. Bruton swings it on the perimeter. Here's Rivers. It's a paint and a one-handed jam. How about that? Boy, that's as good as an entrance as we've seen. Now we're tied up at 40. Whistle blows and a foul called against Alabama. Well, quick. This is a really strong move, but there was no help on the perimeter there in terms of stopping the dribble penetration that time. Jamario Rivers last year, uh, he worked his way inside at the four and the five spot. This year he's playing more of the wing position. And he'll step out for a breather with 17.45 to play in the second half. Well, him and Jeremiah Martin, the only guys who played at all last year for Memphis that are back this year. Okay, into the game for the first time in the second half is Ray Thornton. He nearly lost that ball at midcourt. Now he tries to get it inside, and it's knocked away by Ingram. So 13 on the shot clock. As Memphis will inbound along the baseline. Here's Parks. Trying to get it to Bruton, who was cut off for a moment. Shot clock down to five. Bounce pass to a cutting. Ray Thornton, and he's fouled going up. Well, that's Reese's third personal foul. So now Thornton goes to the free throw line. And Thornton makes his first one, and Memphis retakes the lead 41 to 40. Thornton, who was uh, brought in to Memphis after the Lawson brothers left for Kansas, as he, he mentioned, uh, their loss was his gain. Second shot is good, so it's back to a two point game. Memphis on top, 42 to 40. Boy, a lot of good things for Tubby Smith's team. 
really their first game together. They had a couple exhibition games. Ingram into the paint, leaning, shot plot partially blocked, and uh, Hall picks up the rebound and is fouled going up. All right, let's go back to the last Memphis possession that led to the free throws. Well, you're going to see here a situation. If you're matchup zone, Pete Carrillo used to talk about this all the time. We're going to stop it right here. Everybody's looking this way. Nobody is looking behind. Your head, we used to say, and Pete Carrillo said this all the time, the famous coach from Princeton, when you're in a zone, your head's got to be in a swivel. If you're a back guy, you got to always look behind you and see who's sneaking around. That time, Alabama did not do a good job of looking behind them and seeing what was around, and that's why they gave up that foul. Pete Carrillo still around the Princeton campus uh, on a daily basis, still playing a lot of tennis, even at his age, as Hall makes the second free throw. I'll never forget watching his team play when I was a kid. And I would always, they play this matchup zone, and you see their guys constantly moving their heads, looking, looking. They didn't stop for a second. I was like, this guy's neck's going to be sore when the day's over. Absolutely. That's how they play defense. Parks up top, leaves it off to the left sideline for Johnson. Shot clock is down under 10. Martin. Here's Davenport. Nice fake, leans in. Shot no good. Foul, though, going up, and he'll get a couple of free throws. See how fast he was as he stepped, took that last step to the basket? I mean, he's a very athletic kid. There's a I mean, first-team Juke All-American, maybe the best player in junior college last year. So a kid that is a really, really talented kid. Well, he'll go to the free throw line. He had 19 points in 23 minutes in the exhibition game. This is the first free throw. Substitution is Hall, or excuse me, Gittins will check out with four personal fouls. And here's the breakdown of Tubby Smith's roster for this year, including the five junior college transfers. That's a lot to bring chemistry in. You know, it's a little easier dealing with that nowadays. When I was coaching, you couldn't do anything till the first day of practice. Now they have a couple hours each week in the summertime. So as Tubby said, you know, we've been able to kind of indoctrinate these guys slowly over time. Imagine you show up with all these new kids the first day of practice. Oh, wow. Dante Hall. With a two-handed jam along the baseline to tie this game up at 43. Tubby was mentioned they have 42 days to have 30 practices. He said that he kind of stretched it out a little bit. He said next year we might do it all together because we'll be together for the, you know, for a year. You know, coaches are used to like in the old days we were practicing every day. You give them off one day a week. Right. You know what I mean? So I think he didn't like doing it sporadically. Parks called for the traveling violation, but this was on the heels of Dante Hall with his fourth dunk of this ball game. Along the baseline, the two-handed jam. Alabama and Memphis tied up at 43. Game one of our veterans classic doubleheader has Memphis and Alabama tied up at 43. Hey, it's college football quadruple header tomorrow featuring Duke versus Army at noon Eastern, followed by SMU Navy from right down the road here at Annapolis, Tulane ECU, and then we finish with a big Mountain West showdown as Boise State visits Colorado State. Boise State and Colorado State, you think they like offense out west? Look at the tail of the tape on that one. Both teams averaging 31.2 points per game. By the way, Navy, they've lost three straight, so they are in need of a victory against SMU. So busy day of college football here at CBS Sports Network. Right after a busy night of college basketball, Memphis and, and Alabama tied at 43. Here's Petty, loses control behind his back. Shot clock down to 10. Petty, nice crossover for three. Go! Well, that might get him going a little bit. Yeah, that was a big time shot. That's his first bucket of the night. He had been 0 for 6 from the floor and 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Johnson and Martin trying to reset the offense for Memphis. Davenport wanted it low post right side. And instead takes it up top. And now Alabama back to this straight man to man. They'll do a lot of switching in it because of the great athleticism they have from their big guy. That's a big shot. Sure is. Johnson from the elbow makes it a one point game, 46-45. Johnson now with eight points after that bucket. 
play here in the second half. Jones, a little hesitation. Petty for three again. That's oh. good. Well, it certainly did look like it got him going. Now 49-45. The first one was off the dribble. That one off the penetration from Jones just spotting up. Looked like Memphis fell asleep a little bit in terms of contesting that shot. Parks tried the high screen. You see the three-point field goals. Memphis still without a three-point conversion. Davenport 4-3, and it's off the front of the rim. Ingram with the rebound. Four-point lead, Alabama on a little bit of a run. Ingram has that ball knocked away out of bounds, and it will remain Alabama basketball. Well, you're going to see Jones here driving it into, oh, this is off the dribble, off the screen. That's pretty good defense. That's just a great crossover move to come back. And then Jones with the little dribble penetration that caused the help by Johnson, and he was late getting back to Petty. Here's Petty again for three, this time no good. That may have not have been the best choice of shots, but he had made two straight. That's one of those ones where you got a young kid who thinks he's time for a heat check. <laughs> Here's Martin cutting right to the basket around Ingram with a nice curl. It's a two-point game. Martin now with five points for Memphis. Alabama back with the basketball. Last year, Alabama averaged 68 and a half points per game. Meanwhile, Memphis 74, Jones for three, it's good. So now Alabama's made three of its last four threes. And the lead is up to five, 52-47. Johnson discards the screen off the side of the rim. And here comes Herbert Jones. Jones peeking to Petty, Petty to his right, back to Jones, looks at his feet. And they'll call Tra for traveling violation. Let's go back to the last possession for Memphis. Well, you take a look at this here. First of all, there's two ways right there. Look at that is not good help position. you got to be able to get in here and help on that there. That's why the drive ends up being so easy going to the basket. Not good help by John Petty on that play. Yeah, I think Martin thought about initially to give it off to Parks, but then realized that it was sort of a party of the Red Sea. Yeah, that was uh, a little too easy. I think that's one of the problems. When you switch back and forth between good man-to-man -man and matchup zone, sometimes your help can get a little lazy if you play matchup zone. I think that's what happened that time. Martin forced the shot. Hall with his 10th rebound of the game. Here's Petty. And he finds Herb Jones for three, and it's good. He rattles it home. Well, now they're starting to find a little rhythm from beyond the arc. This is the largest lead, 55-47, for the Crimson Tide. And now a timeout call by Memphis. I mean I know we talk a lot about Colin Sexton, and we talk a lot about John Petty. I don't know if we've been talking enough about this man, Jones, because he can play two. Bama up eight. Well, that is downtown Annapolis. If you want to find a nice restaurant, this is the place to be. It's also the place to be for the Veterans Classic, where Alabama's on top 55 to 47. They've improved their shooting in the second half. They've taken some very good shots outside, but also some high percentage shots from Dante Hall inside. Well, Dante Hall led him in field goal percentage last year, led him in blocks last year, and led him in dunks. And guess what? We might mean why he led him in all three of these stats tonight. He doesn't take a bad shot. He is dominant around the rim because of his great athleticism. And he's also the kind of guy that can disrupt someone else's offense by himself. So he's having a very, very good game. Nine points nine rebounds gives them a real presence in the lane and we got to figure Giddens has given them nothing in this game he's got four fouls hasn't scored this kid's really been able to do it yeah Hall has been able to stick around because he has two personal fouls also so Alabama with the lead now Memphis called this timeout what is Tubby telling his team out of this timeout well they first of all have to start finding guys in transition when it comes to the three-point line nine threes now Alabama's made in this game so defending the three-point line important and they've got to run some half-court offense they have not really done well in the half court now Alabama going straight man they have struggled with this Nickelberry by the way checks in for Memphis Whistle blows and the foul called on Memphis, the illegal screen. 
And here's what a Memphis' problem is. Number one, you don't have a big guy to throw the ball into the lane. Like, Davenport's a good player, but he's not a post-up player. I mean, he's, look how thin he is compared to these other Alabama kids. So they have nothing in the post. They're not a good three-point shooting team. It's going to be hard for them to score if they're not getting out in transition and forcing turnovers. Well, there's the alley-oop that's cut off by Jamal Johnson. And the save on the floor. And now the battle for the loose ball and a timeout called. So under 12 minutes to play. Alabama uses a timeout. They have two left. Memphis has two left. We'll be back right after this. Alabama on top 55-47. This is the fourth annual Veterans Classic, and uh, Lap and I have been here uh, together uh, the last three years. Uh, you've done the last four years of the Veterans Classic. Uh, it, it's a great night, but it's also a great couple of days for the players outside of the Naval Academy to experience this. And, uh, you know, for you and I, we both have, have fathers that have served in the military. You can see the connection with some of the players on each of these teams. Well, that's why this is a great thing for them to see and a great place for them to be. And I know uh, for us, Tom, you know, uh, that's a picture, obviously, of my dad. He fought in World War II. Uh, he was in the Battle of the Bulge uh, in uh, December of 44 to January of 45. He took a bullet, got a Purple Heart, actually, and... Uh, you know, I, used, I asked, I remember asking him, I said, you know, were you afraid? He goes, I was scared to death. I, I don't know how he, he said, be. He said, but all you thought about was how you were going to stay alive and how you were going to keep your buddies alive. And he did not miss a reunion. They had a reunion every two years. He mm. never missed one to the day he died. Boy, so that's amazing. It was one of the proudest things that he did in his life. And he didn't ask for it. As a matter of fact, when they, in those days when they sent you the draft notice, they used to send a token with it, a subway token. So you couldn't say, I didn't have the money to get to the draft board. They sent the subway token in the letter from the draft board. Uh, it's amazing. It's a totally different world. I, 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 you have so much honor and respect for folks that are able to do that. And, and, and you know what, Tom? Uh, uh, my dad, after he got shot in the Battle of the Bulge, he went, they took him behind the lines, obviously, so he recuperated. He got shot in the arm. The bullet went through his arm. I used to, and he showed it to me when I was a little kid, where it went in and out. He was on his way back to the front line the day the war ended. Uh -huh. And he was on the truck. They were taking him back to the front line. They said the war's over, so he didn't have to go back. Nice reversal back. Reversed, yeah. yes. So 57-48 as Memphis is even Davenport to the free throw line. He made his first free throw. Eight points, seven rebounds tonight. Paul checks out for Alabama. Reese checks back in. You know, when you're in that kind of situation, Tom, you don't have time to be scared. You're scared, but you don't have time to be scared. I always wondered about that. Yes, and, I know, wondered. Because he was like a, you know, five foot nine, smallish kind of man. You know what I mean? It's like, you were out there with a rifle and having to shoot people. They were shooting at you. I mean, 19,000, Tom, people died in the Battle of the Bulls. 19,000 yeah. American soldiers. Well, talking to Tubby today just about his dad, you know, he obviously knew everything about what he did in World War II. Uh, he was in Sicily and was a master sergeant and for three years was in the war. And as Tubby said that, you know, he was going to go into the Air Force after college, but then basketball called uh, and it's been a tremendous career for him. But so much respect for the military. He has a lot of family that are here because he doesn't live too, he didn't grow up too far uh, from the Annapolis campus. Well, the guys mine and Tubby's age, World War II, the guys your age, Dad's Korean War, mm -hmm. the guys younger than that, Vietnam, uh, then it's going to be Iraq, Afghanistan. So, you know, people's lives have been touched by all these different conflicts, and you have to really give so much respect and admiration to the, to the, uh, the armed forces and, and, and what these people do for us. Well, here's Ingram trying to drive right to the cylinder and just couldn't convert. He's been very impressive. This kid is a very good all-around player. I don't know if he's a tremendous athlete. I don't know if there's one thing he does great, but he does a lot of things well. The kind of guy you want to have on your team. 11.02 to play here in the second half. And Ingram to the free throw line. Five of seven so far. And now six of eight as he converts. He's athletic and strong. Uh, Alabama continues to add to its largest lead. It's up to 10, 58 to 48. It's a good thing he's at a school where they don't really have to look for too many football players. <laughs> yeah, he would fit in, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think that they, they're okay without him. 
Avery Johnson, who has really attached himself with Nick Saban, and why wouldn't he? Yeah, but, you'd be nuts not to. Yeah, and, and I think vice versa, too. The two plays to pick up basketball from time to time. Davenport for three, and it's good. Memphis is able to convert its first three-pointer of the night, and it's now a seven-point game. And if they can get that going, the seven-point lead by Alabama could be whittled down a little bit. That was a huge, a huge shot for Memphis. Because they were struggling to find some way to score. 0 for 10 before that one goes down. Here's Herb Jones. Now to Reese Ingram. Whistle blows. Foul is called underneath. And well, that's going to go against Smith. That is his fourth personal foul. So he'll check out. Dante Hall checks back in. And Avery Johnson, who played an awful lot in the first half, checks in for the first time here in the second half. So Ingram will check out for a moment. All right, so this is an important part of this ball game with Alabama up by seven and Memphis trying to claw back if they can. Back to the matchup zone. Mario Rivers, and he goes up strong. That's going to be an offensive foul called against the Tigers. Yeah, he was waiting outside of the restricted area. That's Herb Jones, the freshman who got into position to draw the charge. And you know, people don't, you don't think about it, but that's where quickness and athleticism help you. He moved into that spot very quickly to draw that charge. He was not waiting there. He got there, and he got there in time to take the charge outside the restricted area. Alabama with the ball up by seven, 58-51. Alabama last year finished 10 and eight in the conference. Memphis finished nine and nine as Martin did go out of bounds. So Alabama will inbound one more time, this time on the sidelines. It'll be Reese that will inbound. Reese and Petty, the two freshmen that are out on the floor. Avery Johnson, the junior. Dante Hall, the junior. And Lawson Schaefer, who played an awful lot in the first half and has already matched his career high in school points. Shot clock under 10. Here's Petty. Petty against Rivers along the baseline. Schaefer with the shot clock at three. He lets it fly to the baseline one more time. And Hall throws it up out the bucket. Well, you have to have a little luck in this game, Lap. Yeah, one second to go on the shot clock. Dante Hall with a double-double with that bucket there. I don't know how I didn't see much of a foul there. And I don't know, I don't know if he got bodied, and that's one another point of emphasis, which is verticality, allowing that offensive player to go up and down in the same spot. But it was close. Hall could not convert. Davenport with the rebound. What do you got, John Rothstein? As we're looking at Alabama up nine right now in a neutral court, it's important to remember that this team is playing without three guys, Riley Norris, Colin Sexton, and Braxton Key, that probably would close out a very close game for them in the final minutes, Tom. Yeah, they also are without Armand Davis, who is battling a knee injury as well. He doesn't have the same kind of impacts. Here's Rivers underneath. Can't get control and dribbled it right on out of bounds. So it will be Alabama basketball. Well, we said it before the telecast that this, especially when they got foul trouble in the first half, that this team normally has unbelievable depth. Tonight, their depth obviously is being challenged with three important guys out. Yeah, Key is out with the, the knee injury. Had a torn meniscus that he injured right before the exhibition game. Sexton serving a one-game suspension. Riley Norris out with a hip injury. And there's a length of the floor drive that now gives Alabama a 62-51 to 51 lead. That's really bad defense that time. But, you know, you take a look at this Alabama team, a guy like Reese might be their ninth man when all these guys come back. I mean, that's pretty good. Ball goes out of bounds, untouched. It'll be Alabama basketball. How about Petty going coast to coast on the last possession? Yeah, I mean, this is a good play. He's a very, very good athlete. But defensively here, Memphis jogging back, really, and just waving at him as he goes to the basket. You can't play defense like that. you got to stop the ball. Petty with eight points on three of ten from the floor, and they've all come in this second half. And really have come in the last uh, ten minutes of this second half. 
Petty with the shot fake, step back three, and it's no good. And Davenport with the rebound. That is the ninth rebound for Davenport, who's been impressive for Memphis. Tried a tough pass, cut off by Reese. That's a bad pass. Yeah, turnovers are really plaguing Memphis as Avery Johnson got the bucket. Strong move to the basket. He just challenges Davenport, who bumps him early. One thing you always tell guys, if you're going to foul a guy, foul. you got to foul. foul. Yeah. So he doesn't make the basket. Now, he's going to the basket like that. You give him that little bump, you're giving him three points. Avery Johnson. Make him earn it. Avery Johnson, who averaged just under seven points per game last year, is at seven now. You know, to check in for the first time in this half. He only played for a minute in the first half. As Mike Parks will check out. Also back in is Jamal Johnson. Out of the game is Jeremiah Martin. They need to get much more out of Jeremiah Martin. He's their most accomplished returning player. Played a lot of minutes, over 30 minutes a game last year. 10 points. Didn't really... Uh, bring much to the table tonight. Yes, yeah, six straight double doubles, double digit games to finish last year. And we got a violation. And it'll give Avery Johnson Jr. another chance. Schaefer will check out. As Herbert Jones will check back in. Johnson converts this time. He has eight points, 65 51. Alabama's on top by 14. 8 05 and counting to play here in the second half. Don't forget, game two will feature Navy and Pitt. Both teams have been watching this game from the, uh, the hallway, getting ready for their ball game as Thornton will be called for the traveling violation. Alabama is pulling away from the Memphis Tigers on top by 14 here in the second half. Well, back here at the Veterans Classic, Alabama's on top 65 to 51. They've sort of discarded the foul trouble from the first half and have been able to extend this lead to 14. And it's been a mixed bag as far as the scoring goes, but there's no question that John Petty has really stepped up in the second half and he provides us with our serve pro play of the game. He's made some threes, but this is coast to coast right uh, well, here. He's a very talented athlete, this kid. He comes in as the second uh, player in that class. Colin Sexton being the number one guy, but he also started making some threes. He got into the game. First half, he didn't score. Second half, he's played much, much better. Yeah, Mr. Basketball in Alabama, two different years. In 2016, 2017, he had the glory of three state titles when he was in high school. You can see why. Pretty be a pretty difficult guy to, to defend if you're defending him in high school. Yes. Too athletic. Long. Jones to Reese. You have three freshmen in the game for Alabama. Avery Johnson for three, and it's good. Well, you know, you think of that perimeter when when Colin Sexton's in. You got Jones, Sexton, you have hands. Jones, Sexton, and Petty. That's three unbelievable athletes on your perimeter. Thornton tries to force the action and does. We've talked about Alabama's ball movement, how it was a point of emphasis today at shoot arounds. Great shot fake by Reese. Now, Reese can shot fake. He's a good three-point shooter. And you know, if this is the third time in this game that they've driven baseline and found that guy coming to the corner there. So, obviously, that's something that Avery Johnson drills with his guys. Well, Thornton to the line. Six points uh, in his debut with Memphis. And he misses the free throw to make it a seven-point night and to make this uh, back to a 14-point game. Memphis is going to be a work in progress this year. And the thing that Tubby's going to find is, or try to find, is how they're going to score on a more regular basis. If you don't shoot the ball well from three, you don't have a guy inside. The block by Herb Jones. If you don't shoot the ball well from three and you don't have a guy inside to throw the ball into, 
How are you going to score? You got to force turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. And this is just a great athletic play. Herb Jones will check out after this block. He got a nice round of applause from the Alabama fans who have traveled well for this game. Herb Jones is a really good looking player. Nifty spin move by Bruton who's been held in check in the second half. He'll get another opportunity. Got some guys off their feet. Bank shot no good. Whistle blows and a foul on the floor. And I believe that'll go against Ingram. Alabama is just bigger and more athletic, and you could just see it. I mean, I mean, Reese is a big kid who's also a pretty good athlete. Doesn't have that long, lean body, but he's strong, and he gets off his feet pretty good also. And obviously, Dante Hall has dominated the paint in this game. And the wings, Jones, 6'7", long. Petty, 6'5", long. They just have a lot of really good-looking athletes. Well, the amazing thing, too, is that you mix in Braxton Key, who's out <laughs> with a meniscus injury after the surgery. Sexton. And then you mix in the point guard, Colin Sexton, who will play against Lipscomb after the one-game suspension by the NCAA. There he is. And he, he ran through practice again today. And the thing that Avery Johnson loves about him, very vocal, like mm -hmm. a, a leader. He told me he's a leader already. I mean, the guy hasn't played a game yet. Now, they did have this trip uh, this trip to Canada they did. They played three games and they had an exhibition game. But he said the kid's a born leader. 68-55. Petty down low to Hall. Great outside pass. for Johnson. Johnson heads in. High step in his way. And he's fouled going up to the rim. When big guys get the ball in the low post and immediately look opposite, that always creates something good. Dante Hall here, as soon as he catches the ball in the low post, he fires it to the weak side. Avery, jo And obviously what happens is the defense tries to close out hard on Avery Johnson, and he goes right by him and gets to the basket for the foul. 12 points for Avery Johnson. John Rothstein is right next to the Alabama bench. What do you have, John? Well, another thing to look at, too, Tom, is that Alabama has put together a top-flight schedule in the non-conference to test their team. They're going to go to Arizona. They're hosting Rhode Island and Central Florida, and they'll also play Minnesota, a top-15 team at the Barclay Center. So they're preparing for a big run. Yeah, I think Avery Johnson saw this with his recruiting class, and even with the class coming in next year, too. Rivers banks it home on a nice... Run down the right side of the lane. It's 70 to 57. Jones trying to answer. Sweeps it in with a reverse no good. Draws the contacts. Let's look at Alabama's last possession. Well, look at Dante Hall here. He's going to catch the ball on the low post. Stop and look at heaven. Look at the weak side. The weak side is wide open. And now when you throw it there, and now you close out hard on Avery Johnson out of control, that's when you get the drive to the basket and get fouled. That is well-schooled play by Avery Johnson for his big guys in the low post. By the way, Lap, we have to get you a little bit of a stylus there. That circle was a little wobbly. It was a little wobbly with my your, finger. Your first day <laughs> telestrating in 2017. <laughs> I'm a little, little, I'm a little shaky right now. It'll come, it'll come. <laughs> you know, it's the first day out. First day out. Jones' second free throw is good. 72-57, 6-13 to play here in the second half. Again, coming up after this ball game, it's Pitt and Navy in the second game of the Veterans Classic. I will tell you this time, if Colin Sexton is half as good as everybody says he is, this team is really talented. Some people think a lottery pick for Colin Sexton. Now, I, I looked uh, at some of the draft boards, 12, 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty good. I hope he stays. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that he should go or anything, but obviously he's well thought of. And what they lack, I mean, if you watch this game, I think you agree what they lack really is a true point guard. Avery Johnson's a good player, Avery Johnson Jr., but not at the level we're talking about to mm -hmm. be like a national championship final four good. And I'm not saying, but this team has potential. Second shot coming for Davenport. Davenport <laughs> with uh, 12 points and nine rebounds in this game. I mean, if I was looking for weakness, I'd say uh, now they don't have Braxton Key out there. Right. Who's... He would add to the rebounding. Oh, add to the rebounding. He also can shoot the ball from three. He's six eight, and he gives them versatility. Instead of having to play Giddens and Dante Hall together, which I don't think is great. It's like two centers. You got Braxton Key, who's a real four man. Now you've got versatility. You got athleticism. This team has big potential. Betty along the baseline, leaves it for Reese. One-headed shot, no good. Tipped up.
by Smith and into the bucket. We'll see who they give that to, either Smith or Reese. And it's going to be Reese who gets the bucket. 74 59. Five and a half in county to play here in the second half. And a foul from behind. Count the bucket as Mo. Oh no, they're going to call an offensive foul on Martin. And again, Alabama able to get position. That's his first personal foul. Memphis is a part of a very difficult conference this year, the American Athletic Conference. They've got some really good teams. Great league. The move to get Wichita State, yep. a total win for the conference, a total win for Wichita State. Huge loss for the Missouri Valley, obviously, but I think it's going to be terrific. I mean, imagine those people in Wichita now. Temple's coming. Memphis is coming. Connecticut's coming. I mean, you know, SMU's coming. That league all of a sudden. They might have five teams in the NCAA tournament this year. Ball is kicked out of bounds by Davenport. All right, let's look at some of the big picture topics for 2017-18. Well, Sean Miller, one of the probably the most accomplished guy who's never been to a Final Four. This is probably the best team he's ever had at Arizona. Will he get there? And how about Archie and what he does in the end? Now, last I looked, they were losing. I don't know what happened in the end of that game, but they were losing tonight. How will Wichita State respond being in a league where they actually can lose some games? <laughs> I mean, I, I think Wichita State could be 13 and will be 13 and 5 or 14 and 4 in that league and be better than being 17 and 1 in the Missouri Valley. I think that that will help them tremendously. And can Seton Hall and Xavier do something with Villanova? Villanova has dominated that league so much the Big A's in the last four years. Well, Petty answers the three by Martin with a three of his own. And a warning to uh, Avery Johnson for getting out of the coach's box. He just said, You're right, you're right. That's another uh, uh, point of emphasis, the coaching box. Now, I didn't see what happened. Was Avery Johnson just re re reacting to the? I think he had come out onto the floor just a little bit, but he's a few strides. <laughs> eh, come on. By the way, your answer to <laughs> Indiana, Indiana State. Indiana is down 24 wow. to Indiana State. That Larry Bird, he can shoot, boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if he was there. <laughs> wow, that, not a great start for Archie, but no. he'll be fine. He's a terrific coach. It was a great hire. It was like the perfect hire. He will be fine. Yeah, if you ever watched him run a practice, uh, and we've watched him run a lot of practices, uh, he runs a fantastic practice. Those Millers can coach. They can. And so could the old man, John yep. Miller. I know him for years. 77-62. It's a 15-point lead for Alabama. The opener for the two. I'm not calling him an old man. <laughs> He's, you know, You're just putting it in perspective. Yes. He's the father. The father. Just like Peter would call you the old man. Yes, he would. <laughs> 3.49 to play. 77-62. Alabama in control. Up by 15 over Memphis. We'll be back right after this. Year of the uh, Patriot League. They've got some veteran leadership coming back. Sean Anderson, Bryce Doolin, and Tom Lacey. They are a bit banged up. Has, uh, Hassan Abdullah, their outstanding point guard, he's been battling a hip injury, which he's been battling for the last couple years. This one's a little different. Sean Anderson's been banged up a little bit, but they'll take on the Pitt Panthers, and that's coming up after this ball game. Pretty good history for uh, Navy basketball. The Panthers... Well, on the heels of a tough football loss last night, are here in Annapolis. Ingram to the free throw line for Alabama. He has 15 points to go along with five rebounds and five assists. And he makes the second free throw. Well, they talked to us about the uh, the free throw shooting, how it's got to improve. Last year they were 311th in college basketball. That may be one of the blemishes on tonight's ball game is just their free throw shooting. It would be a, a much bigger lead if they were better than 15 of 24. Yeah, if they're going to accomplish what they want to accomplish, they've definitely got to get better at that. Gordon down low, and he's fouled going up. Looked like Smith was in the general vicinity. I think Smith is uh, disqualified now. 
as he exits. Let's take a peek back at your uh, keys to the game. Well, Memphis has held their own on the glass, there's no doubt, but making three-point shots, they have to find a way to score, and obviously making threes is not something they do that well. Alabama needed to dominate in the paint. They're getting outscored in the paint, but their big men have dominated the paint. So don't go by the stats on that particular one. And in Alabama, they turned the ball over a lot in the first half, but when they took control of the game, they stopped turning it over in the mm -hmm. second half. Well, it's surprising that uh, only one guy has fouled out for Alabama, considering all the fouls they had in the first half of this game. As Thornton tries to convert the second free throw and does. Some full court pressure now. Yeah, because time is winding down. It's a 14 point game. There's still time left, but they need to force some turnovers. They nearly do there. Here's Petty to get some separation for three. No good. And uh, the rebound taken out by Memphis. Davenport up top. Rivers down low. Thornton gets a man in the air and then makes contact. So he'll go back to the free throw line. That's the third foul on Petty. Alabama a little slow that time in getting back and locating people in transition. They lost Thornton under the basket that time. And here Thornton eight points. First of two free throws is no good. It bounces in and out. Avery Johnson Jr. checks back in. And Giddens will check out. Giddens the transfer from Ohio State. I don't think he's made the impact he expected tonight, but that's because of foul trouble in the first half. He had 19 points in their exhibition game. He certainly wasn't expecting this. Herb Jones with the rebound off the two misses by Thornton. You gotta stay out of foul trouble. And big guys, a lot of times, they do struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Well, the free throws for Memphis, 22 of 36. That's going to be very frustrating for Tubby because I think their team is going to struggle to score. And when you shoot poorly from the free throw line, that just accentuates that. Reese with the miss off the front of the rim. Long outlet pass to Davenport who lays it in. Good body control to make this a 12-point game. I mean, this thing is not over nope. yet because you know one thing. Tubby's kids are not going to fold up. They're playing hard defensively. They're starting to trap a little bit, run and jump at the ball handler. Yeah, he's talked about that these last couple weeks, uh, about how hard his team has worked, how well they have practiced, how well they have listened. You know, he may have to. He has 10. He feels like he could play 10 guys. He may have to look to pick up the pressure a little bit more to find a way to score. They move off the side of the rim, no good. Whistle blows and a foul called underneath. Well, that's a tough foul to call on the Memphis Tigers. Well, one thing about Memphis, they are athletic. They can run the floor. That time Davenport beats everybody down the court. A nice pass from Jeremiah Martin. All right, Ingram to the free throw line for two. It's the first. Dante Hall will check back in. Avery Johnson checks out. Seventeen points for Ingram in tonight's ball game. Last year he led the team in assists, steals, three-point percentage. He averaged almost eleven points a game. He had eight games of five or more assists. I mean, he's just a really good. I know I said it before. He's a good player. I don't know what he is. I can't say he's a point guard, but he had eight games of five assists plus mm -hmm. assists. But he's really a good player. Started all thirty-four games a season ago. He's going to help you win a lot of games. He's made this a 14-point game, and now a little misdirection by Dante Hall. I don't know if he got a piece of that or he just forced the uh, the body to go in a different angle. And the entire team was in foul trouble except him. <laughs> and Grimm will try to trap him up top. He dribbles right through it. And his pass up top is cut off by the Tigers. No look pass to Rivers. Reverse layup, no good. And Herb Jones with the rebound. And now Ingram will just pull it back. One and a half to play here in the second half. And a timeout called by Alabama. So a 30-second timeout. We will return to the Naval Academy right after this. One twenty-seven to play here in the uh, second half. Alabama on top, 80 to 66. They've uh, 
They've been scoring in the second half. They've also been blocking some shots. I mean, we've seen Dante Hall all over the glass blocking shots. Oh, he is so athletic and so tough. He was their leading shot blocker last year. And this is what I mean by the paint. And you, I don't care what the stats say. I don't know what you think, Tom. I think Alabama dominated in the paint in this game. Yeah, because Memphis can't shoot. They got to score in the lane some, mm -hmm. there's no doubt. But you ask me who's dominated the paint, I'm going to say Alabama did. Yeah, they, they certainly have, particularly in the second half, you know, as it's carried on. They blocked shots. They've made it very hard for the Memphis big guys to score a lot of baskets in the lane. I think they've just been really, really tough. Well, 127 to play here in the second half. And if you're Memphis... I mean, you think about extending this game if you feel like you have any chance down by 14. I guess Tubby's not fouling. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of real estate left in this no. ball game. Shot clock at five. Jones inside the three. Shot is no good. And a rebound by Davenport. And quickly up the floor go the Memphis Tigers. One. One minute to play as Bruton will throw an air ball up. It may have been partially blocked. It's out of bounds. It'll be Alabama basketball. Well, again, if you're Alabama, you're going to walk away with a double-digit victory here. At least it seems that way. And you're without your best returning player in Braxton Key because of a knee injury. You've been without Colin Sexton, who's one of the premier freshmen in the nation is suspended for today's game. And then you're also without Riley Norris, who is going to be a good man off the bench for the Crimson Tide. I mean, you got to feel good about how your freshman performed, even though Absolutely. In the, you know, they didn't start out the game real strong. Uh, Jones and uh, Petty especially. Uh, the improvement of Dante Hall, I think, is another big positive. Ingram, steady. Um, and then you're going to get three guys back that are going to play a lot of minutes for mm -hmm. you. Ingram's second shot is good. So he's finishing off a very nice night. He's reached 20 points. To go along with five rebounds and five assists. Step back three is no good. Thornton with the rebound. Shot blocked by Hall. That's another blocked shot for Dante Hall. Five blocked shots for Hall. And that one rolls off the side of the rim for Jeremiah Martin. Under 30 seconds to play, and Alabama is going to cruise to its first victory of the season. As Petty's just going to hold it out front. Petty, Jones, Reese, all freshmen out on the floor for Alabama. That's been a storyline. And the Alabama fans who have come out to the Naval Academy on their feet cheering. Five seconds to play. The last bucket for Bruton, a one-handed jam with 1.8 left to make this a 12-point game. And Alabama will just dribble it out. And Avery Johnson's team, they are depleted for a variety of reasons, but they come away with an 82-70 victory over the Memphis Tigers. A convincing second half. Very convincing second half. And the fact that they shot the ball so well has to feel really good. They were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country last year. Tonight, three-point shooting made a difference. Solid defensively, fouled a lot in the first half. But with some bad things happening to them, as Avery talked about at halftime, he wanted his guys to persevere, and they absolutely did. Yeah, they were in tremendous foul trouble in the first half. It didn't necessarily carry over to the second half and a 12 point victory over the Memphis Tigers. Well, Avery Johnson uh, was very composed today in practice, was very upbeat today in practice. I think he was a little leery because he was missing so many guys, but I think every coach is that way. You're leery when you're missing guys. You know, he's just a really upbeat guy, Avery Johnson. I mean, I think he's he just always looks, seems to be positive, in a good mood. Uh, you know, he understands what this is about. He coached at the highest level. He was an NBA Finals, an NBA Coach of the Year. Now he gets to come here and mentor these kids at the ages that they're at. He can do a lot of good in the college game, as Tubby Smith has done for 27 years. Well, we talked about Ingram's numbers, 20 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Let's go to John Rothstein. Well, Dazon Ingram, congratulations on a tremendous win. What's the biggest difference in this team versus last year, aside from all the depth? Uh, we can score the ball. As y'all can see, we put up more points than we probably did in pretty much every game last game last year. So uh, we got people that can score the ball, and 
We can play defense too. America didn't get a chance to see Colin Sexton tonight. How would you describe his game for those who aren't familiar with him? Oh man, he's a hard nose. He's a hard nose player. He's phenomenal on the, uh, at offense, and he's a great uh, d defensive player. Congratulations on a great win. Best of luck throughout the rest of the season. Thank you, Tom. All right, John. Thank you very much. And Alabama wins it 82 to 70 as they take Game One of the Veterans Classic here at the Naval Academy. For Steve Lapis, John Rothstein, and our entire crew, right. I'm Tom McCarthy. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We'll be back in a bit with our second game between Pittsburgh and Navy. After the break, we'll toss it back to Dana and Wally here in Alumni Hall with Inside College Basketball Veterans Classic.